इस यूट्यूब लाइव सेशन बिफोर आई प्रोसीड जस्ट गिव मी अ नॉड अ थम्स अप वेदर आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल हेलो माया हेलो हेलो दीक्षी मौलिक थैंक यू फॉर दैट नॉट सो वेलकम टू दिस टूडेज यूट्यूब लाइव सेशन विच इज द एपिसोड टू ऑफ अ सीरीज ऑन एम्स पी जी डेली विच इज वॉट वी हैव टारगेटेड फॉर दिस मंथ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी टू हेल्प यू प्रैक्टिस न्यू पैटर्न एम्स क्वेश्चन सो दैट यू गेट अ नैक ऑफ सॉल्विंग दिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दैट यू नो डू नॉट गेट अफ्रेड दैट एम्स हैज न्यू पैटर्न क्वेश्चन वॉट एवर बी द पैटर्न ऑफ द क्वेश्चन द कॉन्टेंट रिमेन्स द सेम द सिलेबस रिमेन्स द सेम इट्स राधर बेटर इफ एम्स हैज क्वेश्चन लाइक असर्शन एंड रीजनिंग ट्रू फॉल्स मैच द फॉलोइंग स्टूडेंट्स एक्चुअली हू वर्क हार्ड हु स्टडी वेल विल स्कोर बेटर सो my today's session since it is my first session in this aims daily series i will you know help you realize or help you learn how should you read a topic targeted at aims you know a same topic how different questions can be asked how different pattern questions match the following assertion reasoning true and false image based questions can be asked on the same topic so follow this trend this pattern when you are preparing for the exam when you are solving the previous year papers follow this trend so that you master that particular topic so the today's topic hello gayatri hello chandan welcome to this session i'm glad to see you all here that's great to see you all here on sunday evening this shows your dedication your determination to crack aims so as i said my today's session would be based on one topic but different pattern of questions it would be a mix of both as always in my session is concepts and mnemonics so it would be a perfect mix of both so my today's topic would be on congenital heart disease okay so shall we start good evening ketan welcome yes tikshi that definitely at the end you have some motivation also so i I've, i've read your mind and you know for the first time i've added some motivation in the end so you know stay tuned till the end that's great so now the first pattern of question that we would be seeing on this topic very high chances of being asked in the match the following so you have column a and you have column b in column a you have your different appearances of the heart on chest x ray and you have the associated conditions so now please start answering for the first condition so what happens in the match the following question in aims is in the left side column you will have suppose say five items in the right side column they give you more than five just for the purpose of confusing the students okay so the first one that is snowman heart maya says b that is infra cardiac tapvc dikshi says g second for g okay boot shape heart is tetralogy let us start one by one what will be the answer for first snowman heart i i know all of you know that boot shape heart is tetralogy of fallow but i'm not starting with boot shape heart the first that you have to answer is snowman heart where do you see snowman heart yes first would be raghav says e epstein's anomaly akhilesh says d supracardiac tv pvc first is d okay so you know this is because i'm discussing that is why we are going one by one but the pattern or the trend that you should follow i'll tell you at the end when we finish discussing this question that how you should solve match the following but for the purpose of discussion first i'm going one by one so your snowman heart is seen probably if you are confused here you know that boot shape heart all of you know that boot shape heart is g that is tetralogy of fallow okay egg on side heart egg in cup heart egg on string heart so whenever you get this question of match the following start solving the answers which you know first for example you knew boot shape heart so mark the answer for that so that your one option is out so tetralogy of fallow is out i hope we all know that boot shape heart is tetralogy of fallow correct um, maya says third is a fourth is c egg on side heart 
is transposition of great arteries again cup heart is constrictive pericarditis what this is what she says okay so I, i'll get back to you first let me tell you the mnemonics to remember this the best way that you can remember the various appearances some of these which are asked in this question i'll tell you now number one is your for example say boot shape heart okay so when you have to remember boot shape heart imagine visualize a boot which is falling from above okay so in your mind create that picture that scene where the boot is falling so boot falls okay so the boot is falling so boot shape heart is seen in fallows tetralogy okay so boot shape heart is fallow so the boot is falling so boot shape heart is fallows tetralogy okay the next is the next that you need to know is your egg in cup heart okay so egg in cup heart to remember that visualize this cup okay so there is a cup and in that cup you are putting egg because the egg is in cup so the egg is going into the cup but since the space is not too much the egg is not able to go inside the cup till the bottom because of that the egg is getting constricted by the cup okay so the egg is getting constricted by the cup because of narrow space the egg is getting constricted so egg in cup will be seen in constrictive pericarditis it will be seen in constrictive pericarditis so when you put the egg in the cup the cup constricts the egg and that is where you see egg in cup appearance now the next that you need to know is egg on side okay the next is egg on side appearance so now the egg which was in the cup you are shifting this egg to the side from the cup you are putting the egg on side so from the cup the egg is going to the side so that is egg on side so what are you doing you are transpositioning the egg from the cup to the side so where will you see egg on side since you are transpositioning it will be seen in transposition of great arteries that is tga so egg on side is seen in transposition of great arteries correct now where do you see egg on string so when you have shifted or transposition this egg from the cup to the side this egg is attached to a string now okay so from when you put the egg to the side it is attached to the string so egg on side or egg on string mean the same thing so both egg on side and egg on string are seen in transposition of great arteries then is your snowman heart okay then is your snowman heart now snowman imagine snow so when there is snowfall snow falls from above down it does not come from down below so when you have snowfall snow comes from above that is supra okay so it is seen in supra cardiac tapvc so snowman heart snow falls from up that is supra so snowman is supra cardiac tapvc is that clear yes so now let us go back to our match the following now and i am sure that all of you will be able to answer this now so where do you see snowman heart so snow falls from up that is supra so for first it would be supra cardiac tapvc that is option d okay very good so now you know that first is d boot shape heart so the boot falls so it is seen in fallows tetralogy that is tetralogy of fallot very good it is second is g very good where do you see egg on side you are transpositioning the egg to the side from the cup you are transpositioning so where is egg on side which one will be the answer yes third would be a transposition of great arteries very good the bear will be egg in cup when you put the egg in the cup it gets constricted so egg in cup is constrictive pericarditis that is c where is egg on string heart we said when we transposition to the side the egg is attached to the string so egg on side egg on string mean the same thing so it is transposition of great arteries again is that clear so yes fourth is c and fifth is a very good so is that clear how do you remember the heart diseases so you have seen transposition of great arteries 
is egg on side or egg on string infracardiac tapvc we'll see sometime later in a plus course shimeter sign is seen constrictive pericarditis you have egg in cup supracardiac supra snowfall so snowman heart abstains anomaly how to remember i'll tell you that how abstains anomaly and tricuspid atresia what is the appearance in both of them you see box shape heart i'll cover them in my plus course on an academy if you are not subscribed to it you know as your as a sincere advice from your well wisher take this that you should join the an academy plus platform well i'll be sharing many more mnemonics like this next is tetralogy of fallow boot is falling so you see boot shape heart in tetralogy of fallow is that clear yes so this is how the match the following question will be in your aims so wherever you have a list you know questions like types of pulse types of murmur or uh, the various appearances the type of the crystals the renal stones culture media appearances all of these can come as match the following wherever there is a list and the left side column right side column right side column will have more options just to create the confusion okay now since i told you that i'll tell you that same topic how different questions can be asked on that topic now let us see the next question cottage loaf heart is seen in yes please start answering cottage loaf heart is seen in tga supracardiac tapvc infracardiac tapvc or tetralogy of fallow where do you see cottage loaf heart yes very good all of you are correct it is seen in supra cardiac tapvc okay aurashri it is not infra cardiac tapvc it is supra cardiac tapvc just that you need to know that cottage loaf loaf means a bread and cottage loaf is a bread which has this figure of eight appearance or it is like a snowman so remember that your snowman heart snowman is like what snowman is like this okay so snowman heart is also called as figure of eight heart because it looks like figure of eight or it is also called as cottage loaf heart because cottage loaf is a bread which has a figure of eight appearances so the take home point from this is you should know alternative names of some particular appearance particularly in radiology because one appearance you know is given multiple names like snowman figure of eight cottage loaf heart similarly in hyperparathyroidism in the skull rather than giving salt and paper in one of the recent nb exams they gave pepper pot skull so you should know the alternative names of the signs that is what number 1 is your take home point that alternative names are important to know okay so to give you the visual memory this is where you see that this is a snowman which is like a figure of 8 this is your cottage loaf again which is like as you can see this is your figure of 8 appearance and this is of course is 8 that is figure of 8 so all of these mean the same thing so now in the match the following we read that snowman heart so if in the question there is figure of 8 and you have the options like that you should know that snowman looks like figure of 8 so figure of 8 is nothing but snowman which is seen in supracardiac supracardiac tapvc is that clear yes now can you tell me where do you see figure of 8 appearance in mri brain in mri brain figure of 8 is seen in Yes can someone tell me in mri brain figure of 8 appearance is seen in so as you can see figure of 8 the brain will have this appearance like the figure of 8 appearance very good rujuta it is seen in lesencephaly okay it is seen in lesencephaly because lesencephaly means the gyri are not formed the brain surface is smooth so the smooth surface gives it this figure of 8 appearance so it is seen in lesencephaly yes very good maya pituitary adenoma also has figure of 8 appearance particularly in pituitary macro adenoma pituitary macro adenoma it has a figure of 8 appearance so the next take home point from this is that you should know where else you see these signs okay 
so as soon as you read figure of 8 in chest you should ask yourself did i read anywhere else figure of 8 in the brain in the pituitary anywhere else so this is how you integrate everything is that clear so one thing you should jump from one system to the other system you should know about that thing in and out so that is your take home point that where else do you see similar named signs clear now let us see the next type of question which is asked in your aims exam introduced recently assertion and reasoning type of question okay so let us read the assertion the assertion is cor and sabo is seen in tetralogy of fallow the reasoning is overriding of aorta is seen in tetralogy of fallow now you will have these options in the exam option a means that both assertion reason are true and reason is the correct explanation B is that both are true but reason is not the correct explanation. C is assertion is true but reason is false. D is assertion is false but reason and true. And E is both assertion and reason are false. What do you think is the answer to this? This is a question which has been asked in your recent AIMS exam and even in your NEED PG question. Important, you know, tetralogy of fallow is asked very, very frequently. Yes very good so the correct answer is b that is both assertion and reason are true but reason is not the correct explanation now this is to give you an example that how should you solve this assertion and reasoning type of questions whenever you get these questions read assertion first read reason second and read both of them as independent statements okay do not try to correlate them at all so first read the assertion that cor and sabo is seen in tetralogy of fallow and then try to answer this first question whether this is true or false then only go to the reason so cor and sabo is seen in tetralogy of fallow true or false true okay it is true because what is cor and sabo cor and sabo is nothing but another name for boot shape heart so you should know that boot shape heart is also called as cor and sabo i'll tell you why it is called that okay so cor and sabo is seen in tetralogy of fallow boot shape heart is seen in tetralogy of fallow true so automatically your option d that is assertion is false option e that is both assertion and reason are false these are ruled out because you have come to the conclusion that assertion is true so option d and option e are ruled out now next read the reason as an independent statement is overriding of aorta seen in tetralogy of fallow yes that means it is a true statement so option c that is reason is false is also ruled out so option c is also ruled out now you have to choose only between a and b which is where majority of the confusion comes into place majority of the questions are like that so both assertion and reason are true reason is the correct explanation or reason is not the correct explanation now try to reason it out so boot shape heart is seen in tetralogy of fallow ask yourself why so is it seen because of overriding of aorta is the boot shape heart seen because of the overriding of aorta no very good famida it is seen because of the right ventricular hypertrophy it is not because of the overriding of aorta overriding of aorta is a feature but that does not lead to the boot shape heart it is the right ventricular hypertrophy which leads to the boot shape heart that is why your answer becomes that reason is not the correct explanation so your correct answer is option b so always adopt this method of solving assertion and reasoning read assertion as an independent statement reason as an independent statement are they true or are they false if both are true then try to reason out whether the reason is correct or not otherwise you will get your answer in these three options itself is that clear now what is cor and sabo so when i say cor and sabo cor means like coronary that means the heart and sabo is nothing but a type of a boot a type of a boot which has an upturned pointed edge in the front so similarly in tetralogy of fallow because of the right ventricular hypertrophy why do you get the right ventricular hypertrophy because of the pulmonary stenosis so you get right ventricular hypertrophy and we all know that in right ventricular hypertrophy the apex goes up and out in left ventricular hypertrophy 
the apex goes down and out so this is what you should remember rvh the upper the apex goes up and out lvh the apex goes down and out and since it is going upwards similar to the sabo that is a boot that is why it is called as cor and sabo so this is what is the image of your boot shape heart as you can see the apex which you are seeing here the apex is going up okay the apex is going up and this is what is called as a sabo a shoe which you can see has an upturned pointed end okay so that is where you can see that boot which has you can see that boot which has this upturned edge similar to this right ventricular hypertrophy it has an upturned edge so always keep this image in mind and this is basically because of your right ventricular hypertrophy and right ventricular hypertrophy is because of the pulmonary stenosis clear now let us see the next question now the next pattern of question that can be asked on a same topic is image based questions previously what used to happen even if you remember that snowman is supra cardiac tetralogy of fellow is boot shape heart that was enough but now since you have image based questions you need to know how does boot shape heart look how does snowman look how does it actually look like in a chest x ray so always always keep in mind this is your another take home point that you need to correlate whatever you are reading with images be this images clinical that is the patient images that they can give you it might be image of ecg it might be your radiological image it might be your pathological that is histopath image so you need to correlate all of these so whenever you are reading one topic you need to know everything about it what can be the clinical image that can be asked can there be a ecg based question can there be a radiological image x ray ct mr can there can there be a histopathological image so as you read that topic if you see that histopathologically this is the hallmark for example starry sky appearance in burkitt's lymphoma so you should know that how does how to identify that starry sky so the best way to prepare for your image based questions is whenever you come across this that mri shows this appearance ct shows this appearance histopath shows this appearance google it out google the image and save it you know take a screenshot and save it in your phone we all carry the phone all the time so start collecting the images for yourself and whenever you are bored you are sleeping you know revise those images that is how you prepare for your image based exams so whatever you are reading start collecting the images for yourself and prepare for the image based questions so now we have this question okay identify so yes you all are correct it is option b that is this is tga transposition of great arteries because this is not a tof it is ruled out because in tof the apex goes up here you can see the apex is down so tof is ruled out ta pvc is ruled out there is no snowman heart what appearance you see here is this is a egg on side appearance or this is your egg on string appearance so this is the egg the heart is like shape of a egg on side or egg on string so that is why it is your tga that is egg on side or egg on string appearance is that clear why is it called as egg on string what is the string here the string here is the superior mediastinum okay the superior mediastinum becomes narrow in tga because of the thymic atrophy due to stress induced atrophy superior mediastinum becomes narrow and that is why it looks like a string remember that anywhere in radiology string is the term used for something which is narrow like a string for example you have heard about string sign where else have you heard about the string sign in radiology yes can you tell me string sign ketan uh, not ulcerative colitis very good maya it is seen in crohn's disease it is seen in tuberculosis specifically if i ask you if the question is where is string sign of cantor seen if the question is like this string sign of cantor is seen in so if the question is string sign of cantor remember cantor k remember crohn's k instead of c write k 
So string sign of Cantor is seen in Crohn's disease. If the question is just string sign, then you can see in ileocecal or intestinal tuberculosis also. If the question is in which condition you see string sign in the stomach, okay, in a child. So that is your hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. So as you can see all of these conditions, string means basically a narrow segment. So in string sign of Cantor and Crohn's, similar to tuberculosis, you get this narrowing of the terminal ileum. Similarly, in tuberculosis, you get this narrowing because of the stricture. In your hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, the pylorus is narrow because there is hypertrophy of the wall. So, the lumen becomes narrow. So, that is how it gives the string sign. So, similarly, in your TGA, because of the narrow superior mediastinum, it is called as a string. So, it is egg on string sign. Is that clear? So now these are your two images which we have seen. Here you can see that the apex is turned upward. So this is the image of TOF. Here you can see that the apex is downwards. It is not upwards. So this is your egg on string appearance. So this is your TGA image. Please keep these images in mind. Very high chances of being asked. These are asked very frequently. Okay. Very good Akhilesh. That is TOF and TGA. Now the next pattern of question, new pattern of question introduced in AIMS is true or false. So what is the pattern of question is they take one particular topic and then they give multiple statements and you have to mark whether this is true or false. Each statement is true or false. So how do you prepare for such topics is by reading any topic in depth. That is what is the whole purpose of having true or false. Okay. So they can ask you like true or false about the renal stones. They can even ask you true or false about the appearances of the heart. They can take a particular condition like TGA, like multiple sclerosis. Whatever it is, basically it means that for true or false, you need to have in-depth knowledge of that particular topic. That is why whatever topic has been asked in the previous year papers, please master those topics. It is just a different way of asking questions on the same topic, but in a different way. But topics remain the same. You'll get questions on the same topics that have been asked previously. Okay. So now let us start about this TGA. Number one, is it true or false? That TGA is the most common cyanotic heart disease to present in neonatal period. True or false? Yes, the first one is true or is it false? Chaitra says first is false, false, false. So if you think it is false, then what is the most common cyanotic heart disease to present in neonatal period? Yes. What is the most common then? So I, have, I am successful in trapping you all. I, I thought that all of you will answer that tough no yagwan absolutely no so please remember this is a question where you are making mistake so the most common cyanotic heart disease to present in neonatal period is tga this is a true statement if the question is what is the most common cyanotic heart disease overall in pediatric population or overall okay in pediatric population or overall then the answer is tetralogy of fallow if the question is in the neonatal period in the neonates then the answer is transposition of great arteries please remember this very very important point and confusing yes so in the neonate yes it is tga overall it is tetralogy of fallow tga is a more severe condition than tetralogy of fallow that is why, you know, in your practice, you will see more of TOF, not more of TGA because TGA is a more severe disease. Is that clear? So please remember that in the neonate period, it is TGA. TOF we see more often because, you know, the child is there, uh, survives for a longer time. That is why in clinical practice, we see TOF more in the pediatric patient or overall. Clear? So please remember this. Next statement, systemic and pulmonary circulation run in series. True or false? 
systemic and pulmonary circulation run in series true or false false ketan says false maya says false yes you all are right because the systemic and pulmonary circulation does not run in series it runs in parallel i am sure when we are reading this parallel and series it reminds us of our 11th and 12th physics where we have learned the electric circuits what is in series and what is in parallel in series mean that it comes one after the other parallel means that they both go parallel they do not intersect at all okay series means that one will continue into the other parallel means that they both will go in parallel they will not intersect at all so let me show you this image of transposition of great arteries what happens so as the term says there is transposition of great arteries so normally what happens is from the right ventricle you have the pulmonary artery from the left ventricle you have the aorta this is the normal arrangement now this is transposition so the transposition becomes that from the right ventricle instead of the pulmonary artery you have the aorta and from the left ventricle you have the pulmonary artery so as you can see from the right ventricle you have aorta arising from the left ventricle you have this pulmonary artery arising which is going to the right and left side so what happens is the systemic veins the venous return will come to the right side of the heart the venous return comes to the right side of the heart you can see it comes to the right atrium goes to the right ventricle then it goes to the aorta and it goes to the entire body again it comes back svc ivc right atrium right ventricle aorta and comes back so this is like one circuit the left heart is not included at all on the left side what happens is you have the left ventricle pulmonary artery from the pulmonary veins blood coming into the left atrium left ventricle pulmonary artery pulmonary veins coming into the left atrium so you can see in the left side you have all this oxygenated blood in the right side which is rather going to the entire body you have deoxygenated deoxygenated blood and that is why the patient presents with cyanosis because the aorta is carrying deoxygenated blood so that is why it always presents with cyanosis and as you can see these are two independent uh, circulation right side left side that is why they are in parallel so this statement they are in series is false now let us see the next statement prostaglandin e can be given as palliative medical management true or false yes can prostaglandin be given as a palliative medical management yes it is true it is true what is the concept behind it how can we give prostaglandin e yes dhanraj it is true and not false so what happens is as you can see here so you have the two different circulations going systemic one circulation pulmonary other circulation they are not mixing at all if there is no vsd no asd no pda so the aorta will carry on the blood the deoxygenated blood pulmonary will have the oxygenated blood they are not mixing so for the patient to survive you need some type of mixing otherwise the patient will keep getting deoxygenated blood and the child will die very soon that is why mixing of the two circulations is important mixing of the systemic and pulmonary circulation is important that means it is a favorable thing it 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 has a good prognosis rather than no mixing so this mixing can occur at the level of the atria that is the right atrium and the left atrium that is there can be asd or at the level of ventricles that means there can be vsd or it can be at the level of the great arteries that is aorta and pulmonary artery connected and that is by the that is by the pda okay by the patent ductus arteriosus so since this mixing is favorable that is why you want the ductus arteriosus to remain functional and that is why you want pda to remain open and for this pda to remain open you give prostaglandin e okay so remember this mnemonic that open is e prostaglandin e it opens the ductus arteriosus so prostaglandin e opens the ductus arteriosus so that is why the ductus arteriosus is patented by prostaglandin because we want to maintain the communication between the two circulations okay in contrast if you want to close the ductus arteriosus if you do not want the two systems to communicate so what drug will you give 
very easy you will give something which is antagonizing prostaglandins which does not allow prostaglandins to be formed and that is nothing but your NSAIDs so that is why you give this non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs most important that is given is indomethacin okay so indomethacin can be given even ibuprofen can be given okay so if you want to close give indomethacin if you want to open open is e then give prostaglandin e is that clear yes so your third option is correct let us see the fourth statement heart failure occurs at 2 weeks is it true or false heart failure occurs at 2 weeks true or false yes this is false what is incorrect about this statement i tell you that this is false what is incorrect about this statement please remember that in your congenital heart diseases for the heart failure you have rule of 2 okay you have rule of 2 i am telling you this from the reference book of nelson okay so this has been tested i mean you know this is reliable this is from nelson's itself there is rule of 2 in heart failure in congenital heart disease heart failure occurring at 2 days heart failure occurring at 2 weeks and heart failure occurring at 2 months which are the conditions which is the condition where the heart fails at 2 days for 2 days it is tga why because your ductus arteriosus closes by the second day 24 hours there is functional closure of ductus arteriosus so the cyanosis worsens because there is no mixing so tga the patient will get heart failure by 2 days that is why prostaglandin e is given to maintain the ductus arteriosus at 2 weeks which is the condition which can lead to heart failure is coarctation of aorta okay at 2 months it is vsd okay it is vsd so these are the important rule of 2 2 days tga 2 weeks coarctation of aorta and 2 months is vsd that is your rule of 2 in the congenital heart diseases okay so that is why the incorrect statement it is not 2 weeks it is 2 days the heart failure occurs at 2 days let us see the next statement balloon atrial septostomy is definitive treatment is it true or false yes balloon atrial septostomy is definitive treatment this is a false statement as the term says balloon atrial septostomy means you are trying to create a septum between the atria so that there is a mixing okay so to provide this mixing you can do septostomy as a palliative treatment okay you can do septostomy as a palliative treatment but the definitive treatment is not septostomy yes very good dr ankur the definitive treatment is you will have to switch you will have to switch these arteries you will have to get it to normal so you will have to switch this aorta to the left side and pulmonary artery to the right side so the definitive treatment is your arterial switch procedure okay so the definitive treatment is arterial switch best performed within 2 weeks and your septostomy where you are trying to create this asd is just a temporary treatment that's just a palliative treatment the definitive treatment is your arterial switch okay so remember that arterial switch is performed so that you can switch the arteries again so it is performed in transposition of great arteries next statement pulmonary oligemia is seen is it true or false next statement pulmonary oligemia is seen is it true or false yes this is a false statement because in tga it is not pulmonary oligemia it is your increased pulmonary vascularity which cyanotic heart disease presents with pulmonary oligemia tetralogy of fallo okay tetralogy of fallo presents with pulmonary oligemia because of the pulmonary stenosis so remember that in tga there is increased pulmonary vascularity in tof because of the pulmonary stenosis there is decreased pulmonary vascularity okay 
so remember this tga has increased why increased because we said that tga generally will have the communication between the two like there will be asd vsd that is why you will have more blood coming to the right side and going to the lungs so that is why there will be increased pulmonary vascularity because of the asds or vsds is that clear and tof will have decreased pulmonary vascularity okay so this was my whole agenda of telling you that how one topic can be asked in different pattern of questions match the following single best answer question like your routine mcqs image based question it can be asked as assertion reasoning it can be asked as true or false so do not get worried about the new pattern of questions if you master the topic you can answer any question so the baseline is whichever exam you are appearing for you need to know the concepts wherever there are no concepts like we saw the list of the heart appearances you can have mnemonics of those so based on these concepts and mnemonics is what my whole teaching is based on and i have taken one course on previous year questions of aims recently on unacademy plus i'll be starting with my new course on 4th of february so if you are still not subscribed to the unacademy plus platform take it from me it has helped lot of students do join that platform to join the unacademy plus platform you can always use my referral code that is dr nikita dash yt for the extra discount okay and to end my session today you know i am getting so many queries from the students ma'am i have not got a good rank in neat pg do you think i can do it it does not depend on whether i think or i don't think whether you can do it or not it all depends on your mindset remember that mindset is the thing which differentiates the best people from the rest of the people what is most important is what you think and whatever you think is right whether you think you can or you think you can't you are right okay so if you think you can you are right you will do it if you think you cannot still you are right you will not do it so it all starts with your mindset it all starts with your i can and then from i can it becomes i will and from that i will it becomes your yes i have done it so okay so can i do it yes i can and i will and then it becomes your yes i have done it so then it becomes like a past for you so everything seems difficult until and unless you do it all of us found pmt also difficult when we appeared in the 12th standard but we all are here into mbbs because you know we cracked it because we thought that we could do it and that is why we did it similarly aims exam neat pg exam whichever exam it is if you think you can you will definitely do it just change that mindset so that you can emerge as the best person and you can crack aims or neat pg whatever it is so i'll see you again on uh, this youtube channel for my next session in the aims delhi session on 6th of february before that as i mentioned i'm starting with my plus course the next plus course targeting the aims previous year questions jipmer previous year questions on 4th of february okay at 7 pm so you will be having daily one session in aims delhi session in the month of february different educators the best of the educators coming and taking this half an hour session from 7 to 7:30 pm so do not miss any session because you will get to learn a lot out of it so till then till i see you for the next session goodbye take care keep studying keep revising and keep winning dr nikita signing off for today thank you